Welcome to Gervy Travel's Travel Series. I'm Gervinda Ravery, owner of Gervy Travel. Today, I have the pleasure of chatting with Deborah Arana with the Belize Tourism Bureau. So welcome, Deborah. Hi, hi, Gervinda. Hello. It's a pleasure to be here today. Oh, well, thank you for being here and taking some time out. Um, so Deborah, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? I work with the Belize Tourism Board mm -hmm. and um, I'm the Senior Travel Trade Officer. So my role at the Tourism Board, well, we are part of the marketing department and we deal directly with the travel trade. So we, under normal circumstances, we'd be attending the trade shows. Uh, we'd be visiting travel agents, travel advisors at their offices. So, you know, we do presentations, we organize from trips, you know, webinars, things like that. So that's my department. Excellent. You basically give us the knowledge as travel advisors to be able to get to our clients to have a fantastic trip. And yeah. you, I understand you are a native of Belize as well. Yes, I am 100% Belizean. In, in Belizean dialect, in the local dialect, we would say we're, we're Bel I'm Belizean to the bone. <laughs> to the bone, okay, there we go. Nice to know. Um, so, Deborah, you know, I haven't had the pleasure of visiting Belize as of yet, um, and we would love for you to tell us a little bit more about it. Okay, so um, just, a, just a little about Belize. Um, the country is uniquely located in Central America. So, um, Mexico is to our north, to our west and south is Guatemala, there's the uh, Caribbean Sea at the east, and so um, the fact that we're also part of the Caribbean, even though we're in Central America, mm -hmm. um, you know, travelers have the options to access the country by air, by land, and by ocean. Now, the size of Belize, it allows for easy tourism movement within the country. So visitors would spend less time traveling from one location to another. And what visitors love also is our subtropical climate, which has an average temperature of 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So although it's a warm destination, our climate is it's nicely tempered by the prevailing winds of the Caribbean Sea. Now, here are some highlights about the destination. Um, you know, these are things that make, that make Belize very unique a country. So uh, Belize is home to the second largest uh, barrier reef in the world, uh, second largest well, we like to say it's the first, the, the largest in the Western Hemisphere. And it's also home to the iconic Blue Hole. Um, it's best described as a place where Jack Cousteau meets Indiana Jones with all the fun and, you know, the incredible marine life and, and, and wildlife. Another thing to note about Belize, it has the highest concentration of Maya sites mm -hmm. in Central America. And it has the largest underground um, network of cave system. So um, we are known as a country with rich cultural diversity. We're also known as a country that, you know, it's described as a health and wellness oasis and also a, a, a haven for, um, you know, people who are interested in the off the beaten path. Of course, our cuisine, it's a mix, you know, because of our culinary diversity. So, um, you know, these are, these are some of the popular touristic sites. Now, in the center, the Philip Goldson International Airport, mm -hmm. that is where um, people would fly into. Um, that, that facilitates both, of, both our domestic and international um, travel. And so, um, you know, from there, people would navigate, you know, travelers can navigate to any part of the country. We're also going to look at the western part of the country, which we like to call the Adventure Central. And then, of course, we're going to go um, to the southeast part of the country. And then um, we're going to look at the islands. So these are just some of the, you know, now, um, in terms of Belize as a wellness oasis, we are talking about um, it's a it's a it's an in, you know incredible place to experience the you know the traditional spas, mm -hmm. and then of course um, 
what we love about the destination is that um you know aside from doing your yoga you could just go out and experience you know be under a waterfall and just have fun you know just just be at one with yourself you know or watch the sunset from your 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 balcony these are just some of the peaceful calming wholesome holistic type of experiences you can get when you're in in belize now in terms of belize as a it's a foodie paradise mm -hmm. um, as i mentioned um we have we have a, a an interesting blend of uh, cuisines it's it, it makes Belize, um, for example, um, you know, it, it makes us one of the ideal places for to, to experience different culinary um, flavors. Mm -hmm. And so um, we have, for example, um, what you're seeing on the screen right now is what is called the boil up. That is basically um, is like ground food, like the, the cassava, the yams and all of these things. Um, the, it's a mix of that. Um, there's a flour, flour cakes, mm. steamed fish or fried fish, um, and boiled pigtail. So those are just some of you know, like that. This is from the Creole culture. Then from the Garifuna culture, this is a typical meal called um, hudut. Again, that's a coconut based, sorry, um, fish soup, and mm. it's it's infused with local spices, um, and it's served with green. Um, mash green, green and ripe plantains. So they what, mash it together. What kind of fish is that? It's usually snapper. Oh, yeah. a love, love our snapper, fresh yeah. snapper. So nice. um, you know, we we they, some people do it with fillet, or they would do it with the whole fish that they just cut up in in pieces. But it's very delicious. I can mm. tell you. And then there's the um, relleno, which is um, a Mexican, that's from our mestizo culture, sorry. <laughs> um, it's um, basically a, what we call locally as black dinner. Um, we don't say dinner, well, unless <laughs> we're speaking proper English, but in our local dialect. And it's, it's um, what they, they use is a black, black seasoning, a black record, we call it ricardo paste. Okay. Um, and you know it's very tasty. It's e usually eaten with uh, fresh corn tortillas, warm mm. fresh corn tortillas. It's very delicious. So they would put chicken. They would do like a stuffed pork. They would do um, eggs. It all depends. There are different variations of it, but either one of them, it's it, they are totally delicious. Part of the mestiza culture, there's a lot of um, you know corn based type um, meals, of course, mm -hmm. and I, I, I guess that comes from our, the fact that we're, we border like Mexico and, you know, we're in Central America. So this is right. where the Central American um, influence. And then, of course, we have to show you our favorite Belizean breakfast, which is our fried jacks. Those mm -hmm. are delicious. So um, those go with beans, with your eggs, however you want them. That is a traditional Belizean um, breakfast. Mm. Uh, there are different variations. Some people like the omelets with it. Um, some people do it scrambled eggs with chaya, the refried beans, and locally made um, sausage, breakfast mm -hmm. sausage. Like that is like something Belizeans love. Nice. No, um, yeah, and then of course our local cuisine, which is the Belizean rice and beans. Again, okay. um, that rice and beans is cooked in coconut milk. We love our coconut milk. There is ripe plantains. There's stewed chicken, and um, we use a, a special season seasoning called the anat from the anato plant called the. This is the red ricotta that we use. So there's the black, and then there's the red. The black was what we used to make the 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 chimole, the black the black soup. Uh -huh. And we have the red one, which is what we do, um, a stewed chicken with potato salad. So that, you know, that is something that we love. And then, of course, we have um, a lot of lobster, a lot of seafood, you know, lobster, shrimp. And I'll tell you a secret. We have um, a lot of festivals, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in Belize. And so we have a lobster festival, which is coming up in June. Well, we are in June, sorry. Right. <laughs> um, yes. So we, we, have, um, we have our um, lobster festival annually. We have um, cashew festival. We have festivals oh, for wow. like 
so many different food festivals, you know, um, people would sell, these are local wines that mm -hmm. you know, people can, ex you, they can buy, mm -hmm. cashew, cassava, berry, and these are just like some of the many of them. We have from um, taco festival, chocolate festival, as you see here. And so um, they make like bears from, from um, chocolate or, or what we call a stout. It, it's just interesting how you get chocolate, chocolate nachos, chocolate, everything. Wow. Is, <laughs> and it's everything with, 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 the, the, with the lobster, everything is just like so, you know, creative. They, they get right. creative, you know. So these are just like some of the, the main um, festivals that um, usually happen under normal circumstances. Okay. We, right now it's mango season, so they're... You know, there's usually a mango festival. In terms of our cultural experience, we have to highlight culture because it's very authentic. It's unscripted. And in Belize, we have um, so many different cultures. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we are highlighting here the Garifuna culture. Um, they're known for their vibrant colors and delicious cultural cuisines, as um, we showed an example earlier. And so in the village of Hopkins, which is southeast of the country, Hopkins and, um, you know, St. Bike Village, you can find, you can go and experience the culture there because mm -hmm. they're predominantly in the southeast part of the country. Okay. Now, what you're seeing here is just an example of, an culinary, of a culinary immersive tour. People go, they pick their own coconuts, they hox it. That's what you see that's happening there. Mm -hmm. just, just one thing to note, people participating here, they're dressed in the cultural outfit because that's one of the first things you do when you get there. You change oh. into the cultural outfit. So you feel, you know, you, you get that authentic feeling. Great and idea. Orientation of what, what, what happens. You know, you, you notice it's just very authentic, very mm -hmm. local. It's not anything you know it's just very local and then yes what what he's doing there is um what we are he's what what we say is he's beating the planting mm -hmm. so that's the the ripe and the green planting that they mash in in this giant size um mortar and stick and so um that's part of the preparation and this is what typically they Ooh, yum. look like at you know at the end so and then of course there's drumming Families can take, you know, their kids to learn the art of drumming. And that's one of the things that you're going you're gonna to learn as we go along. That Belize is it's very family-oriented, uh, family-friendly destination. We have a lot of resorts that specifically cater for families. It's a great destination for people that are traveling solo, mm -hmm. you know, girls that want to do, you know, these all-girls trips. There are so many so much fun things that they can do and then right. uh, there's another this is the, the maya culture and mm -hmm. the, this is found like further south we have um what is called a maya homestay program and um again the maya culture they open the the, the families they open themselves to having people come in it's not we don't really call it as a touristic program because it's very authentic Mm -hmm. um, people can come and learn about the um, the culture firsthand, so they learn how to make tias, um, you know, firsthand. So they grind the corn and all that. So these are just like some of the experiences. Um, it it is also a spiritual experience, so they could get to experience, uh -huh. you know, get blessings from a shaman, a Maya right. shaman. And then of course, the the chocolate making is a big thing in Belize for the Maya culture. Chocolate was considered the food of the gods. Um, you know, I'm not a god, but I, I, <laughs> I right? we all love our chocolate. <laughs> right. And so, um, you know, you pick your cacao, you extract the bean, and then you make your own chocolate. Mm -hmm. mm. Look at that, you know, how rich. Mm. Now, wow. um, in terms of Belize as an off the beaten path caven, uh -huh. um, we have um, caving is a big thing in Belize. So people would eat, they would do cave tubing, um, you know, explore, explore different um, caves. We have like tons of them. As I mentioned earlier, Belize has the largest network of underground cave systems in Central America. So um, 
if when we explore some of our caves, these are some of the things that you can find. Um, this is found in this skeletal remains. It's it's calcified. It's actually found in the ATM cave, the Actonton and Chil Muknal. This is a popular cave um, by many. Hmm. Um, there's also zip lining, having all those fun. And then there's the Mountain Pine Ridge Forest Reserve that we, um, you know, for people who love nature, it's like an entire ecosystem by itself, a network of beautiful waterfalls. Um, again, the cave systems, you know, nature swimming pool. People could do hiking, bird, hmm. bird watching, birding, you know, all that stuff. And then um, in terms of visiting a Maya temple, now I had to show this. What we, we're seeing here is, um, if you notice a vehicle, the entire vehicle is going on this ferry. Uh -huh. This is one of the two hand-crank ferries in the country. And if you notice, it's not machine operated. It's a man literally rowing this across wow. the Mo River. So um, <laughs> this is what takes you to the, the famous... Um, Maya temple called Shunantunich. Okay. So that's the temple there, and it's a majestic view. You, mm. you can go all the way on top of it and experience it. So it's, it's very experiential. It's not just, you're not just standing there and, you know, taking photos. You go on top of it, you experience it. That's mm. what we love about our temples. And then, right. of course, we, we have our wildlife. Mm -hmm. um, in this, we have... Um, what is called a Jaguar Preserve. Okay. It's called the um, Coxcomb Basin, and it's the only one that exists in the world right now. Um, then, of course, we have our howler monkeys. We have, um, we have a community baboon sanctuary in Belize. Um, mm -hmm. It's one of the places that a lot of cruise passengers would visit. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, just about, it's just out of the city, and uh, maybe about an hour and a half, maybe about an hour to an hour and a half drive out of the city. Okay. And so, um, I say about an hour, not, not that far. So the community baboon sanctuary, cause that's in Borough Boom. Um, so it's even less than an hour. I'm, I'm thinking of another, I'm thinking of Crooked Tree Wildlife Sanctuary cause we have also a bird sanctuary. Okay. So, so the community baboon sanctuary is, while we don't have baboons in Belize, that's how we, 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 we locals refer to it as baboons, but we don't have baboons in Belize, only polar monkeys and mm -hmm. you know, spider monkeys and other rare species of monkeys in the country. Okay. okay. And then we have, of course, our jaguars and, you know. Great pig. So, yes. Now, um, I want to talk a little bit about the airport um, plan. Mm -hmm. So, um, pre-COVID-19, these were the connections that we, we had. And hopefully, you know, we, we're looking forward to, to having these connections again as when, when travels rebound. Mm -hmm. Now, our country was um, scheduled tentatively to open July 1st, but um, on April, sorry, on May 29th, our Prime Minister announced that we won't be opening on July 1st, but that date will be released as soon as that is made official. Okay. Now, in terms of um, airport protocols, um, we don't have, we haven't released an official protocol, but I will share with you what are some of the considerations right now. Mm -hmm. In terms of like for the airport, when when passengers, um, I, you know, get get there. Okay. So um, we're looking at you know increased cleaning and sanitation of the terminal buildings, especially like for like high touch surfaces and the installation of barriers of um, between passengers and the immigration and custom officers. We're looking at hand sanitizing stations throughout the terminal to assist with with hand hygiene. Passengers must, they will be required to wear masks at all times throughout their arrival. As long as they're in that, um, in the terminal building, they're, they're considering um, temperature checks will be carried out on all passengers and they're, you're going to use non-contact digital infrared thermometers and thermal imaging cameras. Those are some of the considerations mm -hmm. right now. Okay. It's not official, but 
this, these are what they're considering. Mm -hmm. And then of course, our social distancing of six feet, that yep. will be observed all times. And then we're looking at floor markers. So um, those are being worked on to, um, you know, to help with the queuing process of, um, of passengers. Yep. Now, um, the government of Belize, our government will pub publish a list of countries that are approved for travel to Belize and only visitors that will that you know are on this list basically will will be allowed to enter the country passenger luggage will be sanitized prior to to transfer into the okay. terminal and so all of these measures of course you know there we are anticipating that it's going to lengthen the the, the passenger arrival uh, processing Mm -hmm. So we, we will be advising visitors to, um, to plan for longer times between arrival and transfers to their accommodation. So as, as I, again, as I said, it's not official as yet, but these are just considerations that, that right. we're looking at. So very helpful. So a lot of our, um, you know, our lodging facilities and dining facilities there, and even our tour operations, they're looking at daily cleaning and disinfecting of, uh, for example, like walkways, queues, mm -hmm. and other areas. There is also um, increased availability of hand sanitizers, more hand washing stations around the property. There, a lot of them are looking at cash-free method of payment. Uh -huh. You know, um, room keys in the case of hotels would be disinfected and presented at check-in. Um, express checkouts available. Uh, daily sanit sanitation of restrooms, kitchens, and other facilities. And then, of course, ongoing training for employees with advanced methods of um, sanitizing. And then daily sanitizing of public areas like, you know, surfaces, doorknobs, uh, TV remotes, dollies, computers, things like that. Perfect. Um, Good to know. You know, guest rooms, are, again, will be placed out of order no less than 72 hours okay. before new guests arrive for their check-in. Um, check-in will also be automated as, um, they'll, they'll try to make it as automated as possible to eliminate that guest contact. Takeout foods will be available, um, well, it, you know, from some of the restaurants. Um, some hotels will just do it for like all their restaurants, those that have restaurants. Okay. And um, of course, in line with our um, our country's um, you know strict guidelines, mm -hmm. restaurants have to put more space between tables. So these are just some of the some a general idea of what different hotels are doing. Some may be more elaborate than than others, but of course. it all depends. You know, it all depends on on what's happening. So absolutely. Um, to wrap up. I mm -hmm. just want to say that please. You know, why Belize? Well, we cater to all types of travels. Um, whether you're traveling, you know, whether, you know, travelers could be families, couples, girls, getaway, you know, um, adventure travels. We have it all. So um, we also offer unique cultural and culinary experiences, as we mentioned. Yeah. Um, because we're English speaking, there's no language barrier for mm -hmm. English. Although most of our population also speaks a little, we, we speak a little bit of Spanish. We have our local dialect as I introduced earlier. Mm -hmm. And then uh, being that it's a small country, approximately the size of Massachusetts, getting from point A to point B um, in Belize is what we say is a Caribbean breeze. Like it's just easy. <laughs> Right. right, right. So you could put like an entire itinerary in um, approximately like three days. That's, okay. that's how easy it is to do. And on the note of itinerary, um, a lot of people like to do a combination of the reef and rainforest. So what it means right. is they stay like maybe three or four nights in the, in the mainland, uh -huh. experiencing like doing all these eco-adventure tours, zip lining, visiting caves, um, you know, maybe take a horseback ride to, to Shunantanich Maya Temple, um, visiting waterfalls, doing all these beautiful tours, you know, um, bird watching, um, experiencing um, like 
visiting a botanical garden or doing a tour of our um of, of let's say if they're staying at a resort that has their own um vegetable garden uh -huh. some of them do tours so people can the, the visitors could see that you know they're it's organic it's all organic right. it's safe ingredients safe um you know methods that they're using yeah. so things like that um so those are like that is like the, the one of the most popular um tours that are combination in terms of itinerary that is being sold the reef and rainforest and what on the mainland what, Yes. Okay. Yes. The rainforest, meaning the rain, the, the mainland, because you uh -huh. know we can follow our natural vegetation. Okay. So, um, what we what what you will find also is that, um, like when um like a travel agent books with a a, a a hotel, a lot of these hotels or resorts they have sister properties. Like let's say those that are in the mainland, they would have sister properties on on the island. Mm -hmm. Or they work, they work, they, they have a program that's set up between another property. So it, it's, it's very easy to, um, to set up. Right. You know? um, and of course, it's safe. It's a very safe destination. And I must mention in Belize, everybody always laugh when I say in Belize, we only have four major highways. The Northern Highway, the Western Highway, the Southern Highway. And then we have the Hummingbird Highway, which takes you into the Southern Highway that, that connects from the, the, the Western into the Southern Highway. Okay. It's one of the most beautiful highways that I personally enjoy driving through. You're going through the mountains. You're, you know, it looks like something out of a storybook. Right. Um, all our highways are paved, so no need to worry about that. Um, you know, and most places that you go mm -hmm. requires you taking at least one of these highways okay at one um typically generally speaking you would just maybe take need to take one highway but uh like let's say you're going from the international airport to the western part of the country right you can take the, you would you would kind of hit a part of the northern highway but just for a short distance maybe about 20 minutes okay you hit the western you're going to hit the Western Highway. So it's pretty easy and, very, as you said, very safe to transport throughout. Excellent. Yes. Okay. Yes. Very safe. And then, um, of course, currency exchange is not an issue because okay. in Belize, the U.S. dollars, it's widely accepted as okay. two Belize dollars to one U.S. dollar. The bills are accepted widely. So, you know, we have ATM machines. Um, master sorry what am i saying master card yeah, credit, <laughs> cards, credit cards available um, credit cards is widely accepted uh, mastercard visa card you know mm -hmm. things like that um, generally very um accepted in most places majority of the places right so um yeah and i of course want to encourage um all travelers you know um i think we could say Right now, we understand the value of a travel agent, a travel advisor, um, you know, especially in times like these. Just imagine being, you know, having your trips booked and you don't know what to do, who to go to, because, you know, the tra travel advisors are there. We, we look at travel advisors right now as our heroes. So, um, you know... They, they know the country, travel advisors know the country, they mm -hmm. do their homework, you know, and it's all about having, you know, having your best interests at heart. Yeah, I agree with that. Deborah. this was phenomenal. Um, I mean, Belize is so diverse from your reefs to your keys, jungles, the Mayan civilization. You've got action, adventure, and then you can just pure relaxation as well. I mean, yes. it looks fantastic. And you were touching a little bit about um, that you can do the destination very easily. And you were touching about how the mainland, you start there and you spend maybe three days and do some of the activities. From there, how do you transport to one of the keys? Oh, sorry. I, I, That's okay. That's um, okay. So um, transportation, a very important part that I was actually going to miss. So um, when you fly 
into the international airport, right? Mm -hmm. um, from there, you can navigate to different parts of the country either by by land, which is you take a drive. Okay. Or we have domestic airlines. Such, um, there are two of them, Tropic Air and Maya Island Air. Okay. And so you could, we call them the Ubers of the sky. So, you know, the, you have, um, they're, they're like little hapan, hapa type of plane. Right. So when you fly on these planes, um, they're like Cessna caravans, you know, yes. 12 seaters, 14 seaters, 17 seaters. Yep. So um, you're talking about, let's see if you're going west, you're looking about 25, 30 minutes. Okay. Direct, if you're doing a direct flight. Um, right. If you're flying to place like Placencia or Hopkins, mm -hmm. which is in the southeast part of the country, you're looking about 40 minutes. Okay. Um, if you're flying from the international airport to the island of Hamburgers Key, for example, mm -hmm. um, you're looking about 17 minutes gate to gate. Okay. 17 minutes. Okay. So um, if you're flying to, like, say, um, Key Cocker, which is another popular site, uh, sorry, island, you're looking at about 10 minutes. So okay. it's literally, okay. <laughs> it's literally like, as you blink, you're already descending kind of exactly. situation. Exactly. Very and then, nice. And then one last thing I want to mention. Sure. Um, in terms of going out to the islands, mm -hmm. um, there's also another option, which Belizeans love, because we always feel that going to the islands, or, or keys as we call them, mm -hmm. keys, they're spelled C-A-Y-E-S. They're pronounced as like a key. Mm -hmm. So... Um, Going out to Hamburgers Key, San Pedro Hamburgers Key mm -hmm. or Key Cocker, which are the two popular keys. Okay. Um, we like to go by ferry. And they're, they're from, from Belize City, there are two major um, water taxi terminals. Okay. Uh, Belize Water Taxi and Belize Ocean Ferry. They're like close to each other and they go like every hour, almost every hour throughout the day. So if you, you can always coordinate um, which schedule works best within, within your schedule. And right. that's from Belize City Water Taxi Terminal. It's like 75 minutes, an hour and 15 minutes from Belize City to Key Cocker. And then mm -hmm. from, if you're doing from Belize City to San Pedro, it's like an hour and a half. Now, okay. one, one little important information to keep in mind when you fly into the international airport, you're going to take a 20 minute to half hour drive, whether it by, be by taxi or, or, or if the resort has set that up for you. Mm -hmm. You're going to go to Belize City and from there you will take the water taxi because the, the international airport is just outside of the city. So you mentioned, the, you know, it's a foodie paradise. Uh -huh. What you had to say would be a favorite spot that you like to go get some local food. Okay. <laughs> I shouldn't be biased here. But, um, <laughs> there are tons of places um, in, in, like, for example, if I'm in, if I'm in Hamburgers Key, uh -huh. um, there are tons of local restaurants. One of my favorites is, um, I love El Fogon restaurant. Okay. It's near, okay. It's, near it's near Tropic Air, trop the airstrip in, in, in Hamburgers Key. Mm -hmm. When you fly to Hamburgers Key, you can literally walk over, like, you know. And why I love it is because they cook, their, they prepare their meals on a fire heart. El Fogon is a Spanish term for fire, you know, so they, they, they prepare it. And if you go there, like, say, a wrong maybe around uh, between 10, 30, 11. Uh -huh. You can actually see them in action. And um, I love Fireheart food because it reminds me of when I was growing up. It, you know, it's kind of nostalgic for me because that's how my grandparents, they used to prepare food for us. So right. for me, when I want to get that feel, you know, it, it's delicious because it, the food has this smoky, smoky mm. taste to it that right. we all love. 
And so um, that is one of my favorite um, restaurants in Ambergris Key. And this is me speaking personally from me, not from as a, from the tourism board. Exactly. Center. I just need to put that out there. It's just my personal favorite. It's another favorite of mine is mm -hmm. uh, Elvis Kitchen. Okay. Because it's cultural. A lot of the food, it's, um, you know, I love the setup of the restaurant. You, you go in, it's all sun in the restaurant. Oh, nice. You know, uh, they have a beautiful Maya buffet. Sorry, not buffet, Maya, Maya um, cuisine. Okay. So it, it's just, you know, you get that authentic Belizean food there as well. Right. And there's tons of other restaurants that you can experience. Um, but those are my two favorites. If I had to say what are my top two favorites. Deborah, you gave us so much great information. What is the best time to visit Belize? Um, again, this depends on the interests of, of, of clients. Um, mm -hmm. Some people like to say they prefer, uh, you know, from like mid-November to um, December, January, February, March. People okay. love love it around those times because um, it's much cooler. Um, although it's our peak season, mm -hmm. um, and then there is also in terms of like for people that it gets warmer then. So people that prefer warmer temperatures, they don't mind you know the the warmer temperature. Okay. You know June, July, August, September. No, um, mid September to mid October, mm -hmm. some resorts like the bigger ones, they're they're usually closed for their yearly maintenance. It all depends on where you're going as well. Because some for some of parts of the country, you know, you have resorts that are open like all throughout the year. So yeah, right. okay. Deborah, thank you so much. Um, you have really allowed us to experience Belize, and thank you for being with us today. Thank you too, it was a pleasure. Thank you.